This piece of property behind us actually came up for sale in uh, around October of 2007. Ducks Unlimited was the owner on it actually. And um, our family has purchased several pieces of land from Ducks Unlimited over the years. You know, the land that Ducks Unlimited sells is a great fit for ranchers and cattlemen, it really is. The easements are sold off the ground, so the ground does have to stay in grass. So the options with the grass are either to graze it year round or to hay it after the 15th of July. It was in 2012 when I started working with the NRCS office, um, trying to look at ways to uh, just get a little more efficiency out of the pasture that I had up here. We looked at a couple different um, plans when it came to doing some cross fencing and adding rotational grazing to the mix. And ever since we started with the rotational grazing, without a doubt in my mind, it has is, is improved the grass structure, the production of the grass, and the production and the performance of the cattle, to me, is second to none. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. You couldn't put me in another spot in the world, probably, and, and try to convince me that you're gonna get better cattle production than the rotational grazing that we're doing up here. You know, I'll be honest, the rotational grazing, um, what really turned me on to it and got me into it was honestly the economic value of it, obviously in dollar signs. I was thinking, oh, if we do rotational grazing, I automatically should be able to put so many more pairs on a, on a piece of pasture. As equally, if not more beneficial, is just how healthy the grass is and how the grass can respond during a drought. You know, in 2012, we got pretty dry up here. Um, and even in 2013 and 14, we had some pretty good dry spells up here. And in those years with the rotational grazing system, the grass has a chance to rest and it just responds so much better compared to some of the neighboring fields when you see season long grazing. This grass, it makes the most out of the moisture. By using that rotational grazing system, the grass can rest for 30 to 45 days at a crack before you bring the cattle back around to it. The cattle are always getting turned in every 30 to 40 days, they're getting turned into a pasture that's got a, a fully charged battery, so to speak. And when you see that, that nice lush grass and some greener grass, even during the middle of a drought, you know you're doing something right. And those cattle, they are just licking their chops every time they see my pickup come. They know, hey, pretty good chance we're getting moved to a new piece of grass. And they're as excited and I'm as happy to see them get excited as much as anything. Coming out of a CRP, we oftentimes see a maybe low managed system and the grass seemed tired. It just seemed tired and within just a couple of years that grass uh, took off and responded. Uh, just adding cattle at the right time seemed to uh, trample that grass, put it back into the soil for the microbes and organisms to break it down and then those root systems were able to go down deeper and then the rhizomes were able to spread out and, and just take off and flourish. One thing Val and I have talked numerous times when it comes to a good rotational grazing system is to keep switching things up. We want to see how that grass stimulates and, and changes what it's been doing. Because if we do the same thing over and over again, uh, the system gets lazy, the root system gets lazy, it only grows as, as deep as it needs to to perform um, the way we always need it to. So by throwing a curveball, we see how it stimulates. We see a deeper uh, root system go down, and, which then leads to more infiltration. So this year, uh, we're grazing it extremely hard for about two months, but then this quarter behind me, it's going to have the remaining three months of the summer to rest and relax and rejuvenate and be in great shape come next spring. I don't know that there's a type of farm ground that can be as good at sequestering carbon as what pasture and rangeland does. The amount of grasses, the forbs on it. What we're hearing in the media lately, you know, is how bad cattle are for the environment and how much you know, methane and CO2 the cattle are kicking off in the environment. And it always cracks me up because cattle, especially cow-calf hares or people you run in yearlings on grass, they are on a type of land that is fighting the effects of CO2 and fighting pollution at its core by taking that carbon and putting it into the soil that I think that story gets lost in the media. They forget how good rangeland is for taking carbon out of the air. The other thing is, the more you have these grass areas, it is improving water quality. 
And yeah, even this little bit of stuff that I'm doing here on what I consider a small little 400 acre piece of ground is helping water quality and that's helping affect people all over the nation and even all over the world. And it's, it's just a little bit I can do to kind of give back for the whole system.